All right, so welcome to the Angular section of our full stack web development course. In this section, we're going to be strictly working with Angular 2. So if you do know Angular 1, that may help, but there's a lot of changes and additions to Angular 2, so you should essentially treat it as a new framework. So what is Angular? Angular is a client-side framework for building web and mobile applications using JavaScript. Now you may be asking why it's in the back end section of this course and the reason for that is because it's not just a library like jQuery it's a complete framework so we thought that it was better suited next to Node.js and Meteor than with HTML and CSS. Alright so it is in fact a client side but it is also an in-depth framework. So HTML itself was created for building static websites and if you're old enough to remember the web in the 90s websites weren't all that dynamic. Well, Angular resembles what HTML would look like if it were created for the purpose of building dynamic web applications. Okay, you can create custom HTML tags and attributes called directives, and you can attach functionality to those elements. So Angular lets us create functional programming with much less code than if we were to use JavaScript by itself. Um, Angular is often used to build single page applications or SPAs and these are applications that load a single HTML page and then dynamically update the page or parts of the page that interact with the application. All right, This gives the user a, a much more fluid experience. So let's look at some of the many features and advantages to using Angular. All right, so speed and performance. Angular works in an asynchronous and reactive manner making an extremely fast and boosting performance. It's also cross-platform. You can use it to build apps that run in the browser. You can also build mobile and hybrid applications. And there's actually a mobile framework called Ionic that uses Angular for its UI components. Angular also offers a comprehensive routing system with a deep URL structure that can handle multiple parameters. Angular 1 and 2 have been known for their data binding properties, so we can easily set up uh, two-way data binding, which essentially makes the UI update when the model is updated, and vice versa. All right, there's also a dynamic templating system that we can use, so we can include variables and logic right inside the HTML structure. And finally, Angular 2 takes advantage, advantage of component encapsulation, so your app is divided into components that can easily be reused. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about components. Like I said, you can divide certain responsibilities to certain components within an application. Um, components are not only reusable within that application, but others as well. Um, components make your code base much easier to read and allow you to break up the app and assign multiple developers to specific parts of the code and that makes it easy to collaborate. All right, If you know Angular 1 but you're not too familiar with Angular 2, components have replaced controllers and scope. Okay, So controllers and scope are no longer part of Angular 2. TypeScript is another new feature of Angular or Angular 2. TypeScript is a type set superset of JavaScript that compiles down to plain JavaScript. It has support for things like classes, um, static checking, and code refactoring. And it also introduces the use of decorators, which allow us to attach metadata to our components. All right, so here's a quick example of a component and a class. So we have this, this is called a decorator. We have the at symbol and then component. And inside there, we can attach data, such as the selector. Okay, selector in this case is my component. And then we can have a template, which in this case is just uh, an H1 with Hello World. And then down here, we have the class for our component. All right, so the class has a constructor, and we're just setting a property of name. We're setting it to the string John Doe. Now, if we want to use this component in the HTML, we can use its custom directive. Okay, this directive must match this selector. All right, and then we can also update properties and add properties through attributes. Okay, so in this case, we're changing the name uh, to Matt Smith. All right, so in addition to components, services is another big part of Angular 2. 
All right, so services are used to organize and share code and resources across an application. All right, so services are really great for things like APIs and anything that has to do with accessing a database and getting that data and sharing it across your application and across multiple components. All right, so if you're using some kind of third party API, um, like let's say Google Maps or something like that, you want that code to be in a service so that all your components can access it. All right, services are lazily instantiated. And what this means is Angular only instantiates a service when an application component depends on it. Okay, and services are injected through the component class constructor. So next we have routing. Routing interprets a browser URL as an instruction to navigate to a client generated view. It can also pass optional parameters that can help to decide what content to display. We can also bind the router to links on a page and it will navigate to the appropriate application view when the user clicks a link. All right, so not all applications are going to use routing. Some will be true single page applications and others may need routing to navigate from component to component or to just simply load views. All right, so some security best practices with Angular 2. You always want to keep the library up to date with the latest releases. Um, don't modify the actual Angular library code and avoid any APIs in the documentation that are marked as security risk, okay? especially on any kind of production. Obviously, it's okay for testing and development, but you want to um, you know, avoid anything marked security risk in, an, in a production environment. All right, so that's just scratching the surface. There's a lot more to Angular, but I don't want to just go over it all here. We're going to jump in, and I'm going to show you some examples.